In this class, we're going to take a look at how you can measure the distribution of data using standard deviation. So standard deviation is a means by which we assign a numerical value to how distributed the numbers are within a data set. So if you're already familiar with quartiles, it works a little bit like semi-interquartile range. It effectively helps us measure the same thing, which is the spread of the data which is basically a way of measuring the consistency of the data. If you've got data which is very far apart, like spread apart, that tells you those numbers are quite inconsistent. If all of these numbers were the same, then the consistency is perfect. There's like no deviation. So the standard deviation measures that deviation in the numbers. And the way that we basically do it, if you imagine having all your numbers on like a, a number line, and if we take a measure of the average by the mean, so unlike quartiles, which uses a median, standard deviation uses the mean, the mean would be somewhere here. So let's say that this is the mean on our set of numbers on the number line. And let's say that all the other numbers are represented by these kind of points over here. So they're distributed in some way, maybe like this. What we want to do is to measure how far on average each of these points is from the mean. So if that point there is that far from the mean, but this point down here is that far, and then this point over here is that far, we want to kind of measure each of those gaps in the numbers basically, and then average those gaps. And that's what we call effectively the standard deviation. So we're gonna look at an example in a moment. It's not that difficult of a concept, and it's not all that difficult to do, but the calculation and the formula can seem a little intimidating at first. So effectively, the challenge here is to try and keep track of the calculation. So the first thing is that we use a little bit of notation for the mean, and we call the mean x bar, okay? So that just means the, the mean number, and we call each of the points on the data set um, just x, okay? So x, is, x bar is your mean, and x is just each of the, the data points. Okay, so the, the formula itself looks like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna capture what I just kinda did there in um, algebra. So we're gonna take each of the data points, x, and subtract from that x bar. So x minus x bar, that's basically just saying the difference between those. Because that can come out to be positive or negative, and we want to kind of work with positive values, what we do is we square that number, okay? And that's just basically a way of guaranteeing that this number comes out to be positive, because when you square a negative, you get a positive. Anyway, what we're trying to do is to measure effectively the gaps between each of the numbers, but notice that you've got one fewer gaps than you've got numbers. So if you've got n numbers, well, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so we've got eight numbers, but there's only seven gaps, so there's one fewer. So in general, if you've got n numbers, you would have n minus one gaps. So we say that we're gonna divide this by n minus one to average the gaps. So we're taking the difference between the gaps, squaring them, taking the average, which is like the number of, divided by the number of gaps, and then to compensate for the fact that we squared it, we just put a big square root around all of that. So that's basically the, the formula. It does look a little weird. The, the challenge, like I said, is keeping track of the, the information as we kind of work through the, the formula. So usually the best way to do this is to create a table. You would start by making your mean number. Your mean number you'll get by adding these all together and then you know dividing by how many numbers you've got, which would be eight in this case. And then once you've done that, you start to build up a table. So I've got a cheat sheet for this one which I'll just refer to <laughs> as we go along. So the way that you set up your table is you use x for the first column, and x is just gonna represent each of your numbers. Then we're gonna go x minus x bar, which is just that bit there. And then in the next column, we're just gonna do x minus x bar, and we're gonna square them, okay? So we just basically work through that. So for example, let me just actually make this into sort of a, a sort of a table, I guess. So something, something like that. So we're just putting all the x values in the first column. They don't need to be in numerical order for this. So we would go 12, 5, 22, 21, etc. Okay, all the way through. Not too many data points in this set, but it could be quite a large data set. You just need to draw a big enough table. 
So we just basically start to populate all the numbers down there. We then in this column take the difference between the number and the mean. So whatever the mean comes out to be, I think if you take the difference you get minus 3.63 um, according to my calculation. And then if you do the same for 5, you get a difference of minus 10.63 for, for that one. And you would just carry on with that as well. Just working out the difference between each of these numbers and the, the mean number. Remember the mean number, the x bar, you would get, so x bar, you get just by taking these guys, adding them all up, like this and then dividing by how many you've got, which in this case is eight numbers, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just dividing by eight. So that would give you your X bar number, which I actually forgot to do for this <laughs> example, but I must have done it because I worked these out. So you get your X bar number, and you just do 12 minus that X bar, and that gives you this. And then five minus the X bar, and that gives you this. The X bar, remember, is just a fancy way of saying the mean. It's just the mean of those numbers. And you just carry on like that and you would keep getting all the numbers in here. You then just take that number and square it. And that's just really to get rid of the, the negative. So the first one comes out to be 13.8, no, 13.18. Yeah, and then it comes out to be 113 for the next one. And the numbers will seem, I mean, there's no real pattern to these numbers. You could have small numbers, you could have bigger numbers. It just depends really, it'll all work out together in the end. And it's really this last column that we're interested in. So we're just working in columns, right? So all your numbers go here, your starting numbers, X minus the mean goes here. Then you're just ignoring that and squaring those numbers to get this column. Once you've worked this column all the way to the bottom, you then add all these guys together. And in fact, I should have, I forgot in my formula here, I forgot in my formula that we need a, a sigma in here. So sigma, it's just a Greek letter that tells us to add things up. So what we've done here is x minus x bar squared, that's taking us to this column, and then the sigma means add all of those guys up. So we're just adding all these guys and we're getting a final total down here. So when we do that, it comes, on, comes to 808. So 808.76. So at that point, that 808.76, that is the top line of that fraction. So that is all of that. The sigma part, the, the fancy sigma just means add them up. Okay, so that's just telling you to add all those numbers in the last column. So we're almost done at this point. All we need to do is plug that number into our formula. So that's just going to become the square root of 808.76 divided by, n remember was the number of numbers, which was eight, n minus one is therefore seven, and we get that. And then we just process that on the calculator and that comes out to be 10.75. So the number itself, 10.75, doesn't really tell you that much about the data set. What it does tell you though is that on average, each of the data points is 10.75 from the mean. So it's averaging these red line distances if you like. So on its own that doesn't really tell you anything because if these were really large numbers or really small numbers then the size of this number would be based on the context of those large or small numbers but it can tell you the same story as regardless of how big or small the numbers are. So let's say that we did a different data set and it came out and the, the, the numbers were much bigger but it came out to be the same standard deviation, then that might tell us the same thing in that different scenario or it might tell us something different. It really just depends when you compare it to a second standard deviation. So let's say for example that these numbers here represented something in year one, okay? So we've run through year one and we've got a standard deviation of 10.75. So I don't know what it is, but we're just saying that something happened in year one and we've got a standard deviation of 10.75. If we measured the same thing in year two and we went through the same process and we got a new standard deviation, and let's say it came out to be 5.5. So the question really with standard deviation is not so much working through the mechanics. The mechanics are quite easy. It's just making up the table, calculating all the way through, 
using the formula, which is normally given to you on a formula sheet. The bigger question is how do we actually compare these numbers? That's what comparing distributions of data is all about. Well, this number in year two is obviously smaller. What does that mean? Well, we're measuring the spread of the data here. So if your average spread of data has gone from this to this, then that means that your numbers on your number line here are effectively getting closer. If the numbers are getting closer, that means that they're more consistent. So basically a lower standard deviation number means more consistent. If your standard deviation was zero, then that means there's no deviation. The numbers are all the same. There's perfectly perfect consistency. They don't change at all. You've achieved like perfect consistency there. If we did this again, say in year three, run through the same process, got another number. Let's say this time the number had gone up to 15. Well, between years two and three, we've now got an increase. That means that the numbers are getting further apart. So we've lost a bit of consistency there. So when we're using standard deviation, effectively what we're measuring, the same as interquartile range, if you're used to using quartiles, is consistency. That is effectively what standard deviation is a measure of. We say it's a measure of the distribution of the data, but the distribution of the data is really just telling you how far apart all the data points are, which is just really saying how consistent are the numbers. So there's quite a lot to absorb there. Most students find standard deviation a little tricky at first. The table takes a little time to get used to. You'll need to work a few examples before you're comfortable with that. The formula is a little weird as well. Um, you're maybe not used to the sigma. The sigma is really just telling you to add up that last column. Sometimes people will write the sigma in here to say that represents all of those numbers added up. But once you've got over those mechanics, the bigger challenge is really learning how to compare each of these numbers. So definitely try out some practice questions on this technique.